Okay. Okay. Welcome to today's episode of the Thrive with Lime online summit. The uh, Secrets to Achieving and Healing Lyme Through Mind, Body, and Spirit. My name is Elizabeth Elliott. I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. I have a small business here, Fusion Stretch and Wellness, and my passion is helping others uh, gain the information that they need in order to uh, thrive, but really to integrate mind, body, and spirit. So today we have Brita Peterson, and I want to welcome you, Brita, for uh, joining us uh, on for this online summit and to help sh to share, share your story on how you are thriving with Lyme. Uh, Brita Peterson is an author. She's a speaker, a singer and songwriter who enjoys sharing her inspirational messages with others. She loves helping people that might be struggling since she has gone through physical and mental illness for years. Her story of healing is powerful and transformational, showing resilience and dedication. She reaches out to those who need her message by inviting them to be a part of her programs and online community, which is a safe space for those who reach out for help. Brita grew up in a small farming town in Oregon. She has always had a love for creativity and design and graduated from Brigham Young University in industrial design. When she is not writing, you will find her sitting at the piano, writing and singing her original music. Through her journey, music has become more like therapy, helping her release her feelings as a healthy outlet. Brita currently lives in Utah, where she enjoys spending time with her five incredible children and her loving and supportive husband in their old fixer-upper farmhouse. Family is most important to her, and being a mom is one of her most cherished jobs. She loves being outside and enjoying nature and is constantly repainting, rearranging, and fixing up their house. So, Frida, thank you. Hi, thank you. Hi. You are <laughs> welcome. So, tell us, tell us a little bit about your experience with Lyme. Right? Is that what brought you to some of this writing and authoring? Write your book. Yes, for sure. Is it so, one moment at a time? Yes. Okay. Is that <laughs> I was right? Getting through today. Okay. Get. Oh, getting through today. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. And yes, most Lyme people are just getting through each moment. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so when, when uh, did you get Lyme? When did you, well, let's say, when did you get Lyme? When were you diagnosed, right? It can be different. Yes. So I started getting um, sick in about 2009. I went to doctor after doctor and did not get diagnosed with Lyme until 2014. Wow. So, yeah. It was quite the, you know, the first few doctors I went to just gave me like sleeping medication, depression meds and told me I was just a busy mom. And, you know, I just kind of felt like I was, you know, a little bit ignored and that it was all in my head. Mm -hmm. And, um, but then it was like slowly my body just, you know, I felt like I have the flu all the time. My body started shutting down and, um, yeah, finally in 2014 met with a nature path and got the diagnosis. So it was a nature path that helped you mm -hmm. finally get the diagnosis. So did they do, uh, the IGENX test or or what do you remember the diagnostic testing? The I thing remember, was? I know they did was it the Western blot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. One of them. Yeah. So, so, so that's what they did. Uh, and so up until then you just felt flu like. Yeah. Do you remember the tick bite? No, no, you don't remember a bullseye rash or any of some of those typical symptoms, the swelling, things like that. Nope. Yeah. So then once you, once you met the naturopath, um, what, what sort of treatments did you decide to integrate into your life to help your healing process? Yeah. So I started with a lot of, um, IV vitamins and minerals, mm -hmm. um, but also, um, because it was really advanced. So we had to do a lot of antibiotics. Mm. Um, so I felt like, uh, for the first year and a half, I was, you know, I was just taking piles of pills morning and night to try to get my body under control. I also had a very, um, high, uh, mycoplasma, uh, which is another, can be another co-infection of Lyme. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I just, the first year and a half was just kind of trying to get my body to detox mm -hmm. and trying to get it under control. And so, um, aside from the, 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 the um, intravenous vitamins and the antibiotics, 
So you were finding sort of a mold, right? Mycotoxin is a mold. Um, so the mycoplasma is a oh, form of pneumonia. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah. Then you were working to clear that as well. Mm -hmm. Did you, uh, I know a lot of, a couple different folks have mentioned uh, infrared sauna for, for it to help boost the, the detoxification pathways. Uh, did yes. you do something like that? Did you do the hyperthermia? Yes. So right at the beginning, I did try, I bought a little sauna. And so I did a lot of infrared saunas, um, coffee enemas, um, okay. to help the detox process. Mm -hmm. Um, I, down the road, I also did hyperbaric oxygen chamber, which okay. was so helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, that helped me get in remission, um, for quite a while. Okay. So now would you say that you are in complete remission now? I would like to say yes. <laughs> okay. So you've been feeling pretty good. Yes. I mean, would you say pretty good? Like let's say zero to 100, 100 is you are absolutely thriving and beyond. Um, where would you say you're in there? I'd say I'd probably about an 80. An 80. Um, okay. Cause I'm doing really well, but I still have days where I'm down. Mm -hmm. Um, but I feel like I'm, I'm better now to take listen to my body and take the rest as I need it. Mm -hmm. um, but then also I can do a lot more than I was doing. Okay. So, uh, uh, and, um, on those down days, what, what does a day like that look like for you for restoration and healing? Um, a lot of times on those days, it's just really hard to get up in the mornings. Mm -hmm. Um, so, my kids usually come give me a hug in bed and <laughs> they kind of get themselves ready to get off to school. Um, I also work so, but I'm lucky I work from home. And so then I just kind of take a maybe slower paced work day and take a nap if I need to, um, try to drink a lot of water. It's I'm, I'm pretty laid back when I have a bad day. Yeah. So it's so really honoring your body and honoring yes. the needs of your body. Yes. So, um, when you, were there other things that you uh, implemented such as, I know some have mentioned removing gluten and dairy. Have you found that valuable? Some have removed alcohol. Um, some people have really worked to restore that gut microbiome or uh, remove the sugar. Right. Have those, have you done those things? Have you found them beneficial? Have you found them necessary? Um, yeah. So I got diagnosed with celiac disease. So I cut out gluten in 2009 um, and so, so that, was, that was around the same time, right. You started feeling bad. Yes. And that's the first diagnosis I got. Okay. And I was like, oh, sweet. I can cut out gluten and then I'm going to feel mm -hmm. great, but that's not what happened. It didn't work. Um, no. Oh. And then I felt like I had a ton of food sensitivities. Mm -hmm. It was like, I feel like anything I ate was just really <laughs> just, I couldn't tolerate hardly anything. So I went to a really um, strict anti-inflammatory diet for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little more lax now just because I'm feeling good, but I, you know, try to eat a lot of vegetables and mm -hmm. fruit and just, yeah, I think it's a, an important step, just cutting out as much inflammation for sure. Yeah. Um, and I know like when my daughter was diagnosed, she got her tick bite. That was the very first thing we did. Uh, we found this book, um, Recipes for Repair. Ooh. Big anti and and uh I think it really was promoted for Lyme disease. However, when I was reading the it really is for any sort of inflam you know inflammatory disease, right? Or autoimmune. It, um, and so that was the very first thing we did. I know that you are a singer and songwriter, and you know, in reading your biography, it sounds like your music, your music, right, has been almost uh healing. I don't, you know, healing part of that journey, right? Because you are, I mean, that's a, a gift. Yeah. And I think when we aren't nurturing our gifts, right, that need to, that we are supposed to be expressing and sharing with the world, right? So mm -hmm. how has music helped and, 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 you know, really like tapping into that, I'm sure it brings you joy, right? Helped yeah. you flourish. Yeah. or thrive right with Lyme. oh yeah mm -hmm. for sure you know it was hard because you know I think like a lot of us were in bed a lot and don't feel good and mm -hmm. um you know before I got really sick I was able to do a demo for my music it was really fun um and then I just I write music and so a lot of my music during my lowest times I mean I've, I've written a lot of music called 
pain or, you know, all this stuff that may never be shared with anybody, but it just really helped me get, um, you know, those feelings out that I couldn't quite express Mm -hmm. through speaking. And, um, you know, I look back and I was looking at some of the dates of some of the songs I wrote and it just creating for me was really important to continue, even though I wasn't feeling well a lot. One, right. 100%. Yeah. Now, you know, being a mom of five, my gosh, that's um, busy. Yes. Do any, uh, you know, I would imagine, um, I, I can just imagine feeling and living with a chronic illness and then trying to parent five kids. Right. Um, do you have any tips for moms out there who are living with Lyme right now that you would share with them? Yes. Are any of those in your book? Um, you know, I'm trying to think there's a little bit, but mostly I would say, be gentle with yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, and just don't have these crazy expectations of yourself. Um, you know, one thing, my kids are older now and I was having a conversation with my older girls and just telling them I'm getting emotional, how bad I felt for all that I couldn't do with them or for Mm -hmm. them. They're like, mom, like we don't look at it like that. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think I was beating myself up for all the things I couldn't do instead of, oh, look at the time I get to spend with them. We may be snuggled in bed watching a movie, Mm -hmm. but we're spending time together. Yeah. 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 Uh, It is. It's important. It's hard sometimes to be gentle ourself. Yes. Uh, But that that time uh, you do get with your kids is so special. I know that uh, during COVID, I had a senior. And I was thinking, gosh, he's missing out on all these things that he, but well, I get him at home. Right. (laughs) Right. You know, like sad that he was having this experience, but also like grateful. He wasn't out gallivanting and doing a bunch of partying or whatever seniors do. Right. (laughs) Right. I was like, wow, this isn't so bad. And so you can find the gift right in the challenge. Yes. And I think that's part of my message is finding the beauty. I just felt broken. You know, I had depression, anxiety, and this illness. I couldn't be who I wanted to be. And I think it's important to just see the beauty along the way. Mm -hmm. So so you felt a lot of depression and anxiety. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of my symptoms were neurological. Okay. Yeah, Um, that was new to me. I just learned that, you know, some of the neurological effects that Lyme can have, which was incredibly eye-opening this summer when I watched The Monster Inside Me. Yes. And I was like, oh, wow, I had no idea. Maybe I should go get checked for Lyme. And I really (laughs) feel like that now. (laughs) After talking to all of, you you know, all of this people I've interviewed, I'm like, shoot, maybe I've got Lyme. (laughs) (laughs) You know, but uh, I've also, you know, uh, not sure which test to trust. Right. Right. After, because I don't remember a tick bite. Yeah. But I can definitely check off hormones and thyroid and Mm -hmm. anxiety and a little bit of OCD occasionally and, you know, all of those things. So it's interesting that I just had no idea that Lyme can be, uh, have such an impact on, on the brain. Right. I didn't know either. I mean, I thought I was a little bit crazy, you know, Mm -hmm. until I got the diagnosis. But I think that was interesting too, with the nature path, you know, she's like, it's symptom based and test based, Mm -hmm. because the tests aren't accurate. And that's Mm -hmm. frustrating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, do any of your kids have Lyme disease? So as far as I know, no, um, we had taken them gluten-free not long after I went gluten-free. Um, they were having a lot of illness stuff, but really they're healthy. So I'm, I'm a very lucky mom. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Very lucky. Um, so now when I think of, uh, wellness, I think of balancing, uh, physical health, nutritional health, emotional uh, environmental, like, like what's in your environment. Right. And that could be, at, you know, toxins or, or chemicals that you clean with, right. Or air quality right. or mold, but it could also be, you know, relationships and then spiritual. So do you find that you have a, uh, spiritual, um, or, uh, you know, or a philosophy that you really resonate with or embrace, to help you like faith 
anything like that that you uh, resonate with to help you kind of get through each moment and each day? Yes. For me, yeah. For me, I believe in God and I, you know, along my journey, I felt so lonely so many times. And I mean, I just yell at God, are you there? You know, this is really hard. Mm -hmm. Um, but I feel like I have a really deep relationship with him and, um, you know, he guided me to each new treatment, each new step, even when it was frustrating. And I thought, Oh, you know, what is next? And Mm -hmm. is it going to take, you know, it took years before, you know, one thing after the other, but, as I look back now and I can see how guided I was each step to each doctor, to each treatment. Um, and I just, my faith has grown, grown tremendously. Um, just because I think without those promptings and those, Mm -hmm. those nudges, I'm, I think I'd still be laying in bed, just miserable. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And I, I love, um, that because I feel led oftentimes to these little signs sometimes, or these like chance meetings. Yes. And you're like, Oh, I'm supposed to be there or going to see this person or whatever. And they just happen. Right. Right. When we believe, I think you have to believe, right? Yes. Yes. Um, And you have to trust and you have to have the faith. If you're living in fear, you don't necessarily aren't guided maybe in the same direction. Right. 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 Um, it takes a lot longer. <laughs> yeah, right. It takes a lot longer. So mindset would be important. You would say. Yes, for sure. Um, something for me, I didn't realize because I feel like I'm a positive person, you know, I was always, but one thing I would say a lot was, oh, this is so hard. This is so hard. I can't do this anymore. Mm. You know? And I was saying those things out loud all the time. And when I would catch myself, when I finally was realizing my, the way I was talking, I would acknowledge it. Yes, this is hard, but I can get through this. You know, just these little tiny shifts Mm -hmm. that help me um, not sit in that darkness all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. And so then, so you sort of changed the verbiage there. Yes. Yeah. Because I want to honor those feelings. You know, we feel sick and tired and yuck. So I want to sit in that, but then I would say, okay, but I can get through this and Mm -hmm. it may be hard, but I can do this you know, just little things. Right. And so, and that, is that what inspired you to write your book? Yes. I, I felt like I was in a place that, you know, I don't know if anyone could have reached me when I was in my darkest moments, Mm -hmm. but I want to certainly try to reach people that are there because it's lonely and it's sad and it is hard. And so when you were in the, in the darkest moments, uh, you know, you, it sounds like you have a very loving and supportive husband and I would imagine family and of course your faith. And of course you have, you know, your little, your kids, right. Kind of like, right. okay, I've got a reason to keep going. Yes. <laughs> right. I mean, sometimes you don't know that reason, right. Or the why it can be even more challenging. Um, sure. What, what helped pull you out of some of those darkest moments when you felt unreachable. I really, I feel grateful for my kids. Like I'm such a fierce mom. I love being a mom. Uh-huh. So, you know, even on days where I was feeling terrible, I drag myself out of bed. I'd go make them dinner. You know, I'd get out on the couch. Like, I just feel like I really had this desire to be as present as I could. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I have to say then a lot of those evenings I was in, you know, my husband's arms just sobbing because I couldn't hold it together anymore. Right. Um, but I just want my family. It's just has been some of my biggest reasons for continuing on. Yeah. So how old are your kids right now? Yes. Yeah, so my oldest is 18. She just graduated. Okay. And then 16, 15, 14 and 10. <laughs> okay. So you have the so they're all pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. And, uh, um, when, what else can you share with me about, um, your book? Yeah. So my book kind of tells my story before I got sick growing up, I was a competitive athlete. I love sports. And so it first, the first part of the book just kind of tells the kind of athlete I was, you know, I couldn't, I like to just play and play and didn't want to be knocked down. Um, and then it talks about, you know, when I started to get sick and going to the doctors and then kind of sinking down in the depression and the illness while I was trying to figure it out. 
Um, and then, um, yeah, then just kind of how I fought my way back out of that hole with some really great doctors and treatments. Um, one thing that really helped my depression was some ketamine, um, uh, nasal okay. spray. Um, that was very helpful. Um, but now that you said that was a spray. Yeah. So it's not, I'm not sure it's as common, but it was a, a nasal spray that my doctor gave me because um, she could see that I was super depressed and I, I was kind of in denial, mm -hmm. um, but I know there's lots of different forms of ketamine, but that's the one I tried. And that's been very, very helpful. Um, but yeah, then it just talks about just how just, yeah, fighting my way back and, and finding all sorts of treatments out of the box that I never thought I would try to, I was just so desperate. What would you say the most outlandish treatment? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I'm like, I don't know. I have to read my book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will. I mean, you know, because I know uh, one guest of the hyperthermia was very challenging for her. Oh, right. Um, yesterday I spoke with a gal. She was a gymnast. And for her, she's found uh, the most benefit from you know, aside from the dietary changes and so forth, but the hyperbaric oxygen. Yes. That was so powerful for me. Yeah. She said twice a week and she goes currently and you know, she's that, that helps tremendously. That's awesome. Um, yeah. That's, that's the thing that helped me. I would say uh, the quickest. And I mean, I did like 40 treatment. I did like five a week for a while. It was brutal because yeah. you're herxing really bad and everything. Um, but yeah, it got me to a place where then I spread them out mm -hmm. and, and was well for a long time. And so you're well right now, right? Uh, do you, I, I mean, when, uh, like, what does a day today look like for you? You wake up. Yeah. I wake up. I get my kids off to school. I work, mm -hmm. um, you know, I still, I've been trying to exercise. I, that's still, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm almost hundred percent, but you know, I don't know if I'll be able to completely do what I did before, right. um, but I try to do either some stretching or walking. Uh -huh. um, and then, yeah, I just do a little cleaning and run my errands. Like, I feel like it's a really good life. <laughs> yeah. And so what is it like uh, being a business, right? An entrepreneur you work. Yes. Uh, and uh, one of the gals on the show uh, helps women in particular, or points men in the direction if we have a male audience. Um, to living with a chronic, right. Building a thriving business while living with a chronic illness and why, uh, chronic people with chronic illness, it's such a, being an entrepreneur is such a great fit for them. Right. Um, I've been, have always been an entrepreneur for the most part, and I love being able to create my own schedule. And so I can imagine with chronic illness, that is, I don't know. It seems like it gives you a little more flexibility for the, the down days. Yes. Oh, for sure. I love it. I, I work for a company and then I'm also have my own business. Um, and my, my boss for the one business I work for is great. And so the days I feel really good, I can get a lot accomplished. And then the days I need to rest are, you know, a little bit slower, but, um, yeah, I'm just, and, and so, and, you know, and I guess when I think about the environment, right. And, uh, having to work in an environment it, with when living with a chronic illness, that type of relationship with an understanding boss or understanding colleagues is going to be important even to stay or maintain wellness, right? If you're right. already taxed, right? Your immune system's already taxed, you're emotionally taxed, right? Physically taxed, then having the, the healthy and uh, work environment is going to be incredibly important Yes. Added stress is just going to add to that. Oh, right. right. Going to inhibit. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you know, I think most people, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves anyways, you mm -hmm. know, and then when we can't perform the way we want to perform, you know, I think at least for me, I feel like, oh, someone's going to think I'm lazy or I'm not working hard enough, but it's just the way our bodies are functioning. You know, mm -hmm. we can't control our body. So I don't know. I've just appreciated. Yeah kind of getting awareness out there for bosses and coworkers to understand that it's just something we're fighting through. Yeah. Right. And it's unfortunate that just, I mean, just, I wouldn't have been doing that much research into Lyme, right. Unless my daughter had gotten a tick bite and she was insistent. I take her 
because of a TikTok video she saw. Wow. And I knew, you know, Lyme existed and I knew that Kentucky wasn't exempt from ticks, right? Or Lyme right. disease. I was, I used to work at a farmer's market and uh, this woman had walked around pa passing out cards. Like, I don't know when. Lyme is here. Lyme is here. Don't let anybody tell you Lyme disease isn't here. <laughs> and I was like, just remember that, you know? And I'm like, oh, of course I got the card six years later. My daughter has, you know, has a ticket right. with Lyme. I'm like, hmm, wonder how the universe was kind of letting me know. I didn't need to know about Lyme disease. Right. Right. And, uh, and so just learning as much as I've learned at just in the last 10 days, uh, I've just blown away, you know, by how little uh, information is out there for people and they really have to go digging. And that's why I think right. it's so important, which is why I've done this because all, you know, all of you guys have done it, right? You've lived it. You've had to figure out what works. You've sought out the doctors and any way we can help others find their way to, uh, you know, living their best life with Lyme. Right. It's what I want to help them do or, you know, prevent them from, you know, those reoccurrences or that sort of re-triggering, right? When, when, when kind of pops back up in your life due to this stressor or that stressor. Right. I'm, I mean, all right. I mean, that's my understanding is that it can be re-triggered almost like shingles, Yeah. but it may look different the next go round when you are re-triggered. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that, is that kind of your understanding of Lyme? Yeah. Well, it, I've lived it, you know, I'll have these, you know, six months. I'm like, I'm feeling so good. I, you know, I feel like I'm completely cured. And then one day I woke up and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I felt like this for years you know? And so it just hits you. It comes back and, you know, whether it's stress or whatever, and it, it gets tricky because, you know, I keep thinking, oh, I'm just, I'm good, but right. I'm living a life with Lyme and it may reoccur. And so yeah. you just have to kind of like, again, just be gentle with yourself and nurture yourself back to a good place. Yeah. Well, I know we're running out of time here. So tell me uh, your play, where we can find you. I know what your website, tell us a little bit more about your book, the title of the book, where they can find the book. Okay. And uh, anything else you want to share? Okay. My website is britapeterson.com. My book is called getting through today, how chronic illness taught me the beauty and being broken. It does come out. Our launch date is January 18th. So oh. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you find me on Instagram, Brita.Peterson. And, um, and that's yeah. B-R-I-T-A. I just want to say. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, because I would have put an ease probably if you'd said that. So right. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And I sure appreciate you having me on here. It's, it's fun to, I'm excited to hear everybody. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I look forward to getting my hands on your book. <laughs> Thank you. And you've got to make sure you go and check out her music because you can play some of it right on her website. <laughs> Thanks. Right and I do have a new, new song what? coming out called Beautiful Broken that will be coming out soon too. Okay. And that one's not on there. I can't, I haven't heard that. Not one. yet. Okay. Nope. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Frida, for joining Thank me. Thank you. And you, you all be sure to check out her uh, website and her Instagram. Have a great day.